Yeah, yeah. This is Lady Mogul Talk, talking about black excellence. Ladies building legacies, fostering communities. There'll be topics to grow, to grow. with dynamic heroes. Shiro. Time to secure the bag, elevate your goals, yeah. If you gotta grind, go ahead and take some time. Free your mind, leave your worries behind. Oh, yeah. Expand your possibilities Ooh. while learning new strategies. Oh. Every time with Avery, knowledge will be guaranteed on Lady Mogul Talk. Welcome back to another segment of Lady Mogul Talk. And today you're in for a definite treat. We have Felicia Roberts, an inspirational speaker, registered nurse, author, and teacher who is passionate about helping women of faith overcome adversity as they navigate their healing after divorce. While Felicia is not an advocate of divorce, she knows firsthand the obstacles women face and it has made and has made it her mission to not let them walk alone. As a registered nurse for 30 years in the most trusted profession, Felicia served on the front lines of COVID, of the COVID pandemic, and we thank her for her service. Felicia served and utilized her gifts as an inspirational speaker, communicated to her teams and patients with compassion and collaboration. And this was one of her monumental times in her career that proves she understands the tenacity and fortitude it takes to walk people through real life changing decisions while honoring their journey. Using her extensive experience in ministry, she is highly sought out after to teach and share her stories of how she breaks down barriers at women's conferences, workshops, radio programs, and community service events. Her authenticity, transparency, and impactful insights have paved the way for Felicia to be invited as a frequent guest on Living Well with Dr. Peg radio show. Felicia is the founder of Scourageous Coaching and Consulting, and her passion is to help courageous Christian divorced women pick up their pieces, avoid pitfalls, and also save emotional time while they recover and rebuild their life as they walk in their whole purpose-filled life. And best-selling author on Amazon. So we cannot wait to get into her journey and welcome Felicia to the virtual stage. Hello, hello. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that introduction. I appreciate that. I know we are so happy to have you here. And I think this topic of divorce. And as you said, you're not an advocate of divorce, but life happens sometimes. And so I'm glad that you are bringing this topic to the forefront. So let me start there. I know you've had your own challenges when it comes to life after divorce. So let's start with that. How were you able to overcome the personal life challenges? Or maybe there was another challenge um, in your entrepreneurial journey that you had to overcome. Yeah, I, I would say if I started with my, let's start with the entrepreneur journey uh, as this is lady mobile talks. I love it. Um, <laughs> wow. One of the, the areas that I've really had to um, learn to focus on number one, getting a coach. Mm, yes. um, because if you're coming into this space, right. Uh, you worked a nine to five, as I said, I'm a, by profession, been a, a registered nurse for 30 years. And so coming into this business aspect, um, it was key for me to get a coach that could help me bridge the gaps, mm -hmm. um, and help me, you know, I often used to tease <laughs> with her cause I'd be like, you know, I go to start on one thing and then it's got like five more steps to it. I'm just thinking I can just get this one thing done. And one thing that she said to me was, you need to learn to enjoy the journey mm. because it's a journey. So, you know, enjoy the five steps because that's part of the <laughs> that's part of the process. So if I had to say overcoming and and really stepping forward to overcome mindset challenges or barriers in the entrepreneurial space was definitely getting a coach. Um, when I talk about personally for me, what it has meant or what I have done to overcome those personal challenges as well as I am a Christian and um, my relationship with the Lord is pivotal. It has just been key um, to how I make decisions, to how I pray through situations, you know, to overcome barriers and get guidance, you know, from God. And so that has really been how I've navigated or come through, you know, overcoming divorce, 
being a teen mom. <laughs> That's a whole nother story. Um, but yeah, sharing just some of those those key areas uh, in my life. That's a great way to start the segment. And I want to go back to your point about enjoying the journey. So oftentimes when I give my presentation on business systems and automation, people are so overwhelmed. I'm like, this is just the beginning. And those five steps is what resonated with me. I was like, I always tell them that it doesn't happen overnight. It's okay to just take it stage by stage, yes. step by step, and enjoy the process because it just takes time to accomplish certain things. So I'm glad that you said that. Number two about getting a coach is so important. Yeah. I always say even your favorite coaches have coaches because yeah. there is a place where they want to be. And so you have to have some sort of direction. You can't always do it alone. Even if you are the smartest person in the room, you have to find someone smarter than yourself. So that's very important to highlight. And then to your last point about just navigating your own personal journey, I'm glad that this topic is being talked about more because taboo topics, especially in the Black community, are divorce and mental health. And so why did you feel it was important to not necessarily just stick to your nursing career, but to start something, start a movement, if I can go as far as to say, to speak about this topic? Yes, excellent question. Um, well, 10 years ago, I found myself in this place um, and I was going through a divorce. Uh, my mom suddenly passed <laughs> in the middle of it. Um, but what I came to understand is I, there was nobody. You can call friends and family and they're, they're trying to be there for you the best way they know how. But in the reality, they, they, they're hurting just as much as you are. And so um, I didn't have somebody to tell me like on the days that I thought I was totally out of my mind that that was normal and part of the grieving process. So I spent a lot of time in angst and, and you know, anger and depression and, and anxiety and but not realizing that this this is you have to go through this like. Don't um, but don't do it alone and don't do it with friends and family who are going to take your side and not be, you know, some ways ahead of you or out of the picture mm -hmm. to be able to help you see the bigger picture to get to your healing. Mm -hmm. So I just said, you know what, I need to come and, and help women do divorce different. You know, mm -hmm. mom and them, like as you talked about, we didn't talk about it. Right. So women get divorced oftentimes and they will use time. It's one of my, uh, uh, gosh, one of my uh, scratch board because we, we will say like, well, time will heal all the wounds. And it won't because I have seen women personally um, and in my family and friends that 10 years down the road, they're just as bitter as the day the divorce happened because we didn't do anything to heal. Mm -hmm. And so that is um, my passion is to help women heal properly, do divorce different. You don't have to be bitter, Betty. Mm -hmm. You do not have to be scrolling his social media, trying to find out what he's doing with his life. Right. <laughs> you can get loving you again and not focus on the past or feeling like a failure or having shame and guilt overwhelm you. Mm -hmm. And and it's like, who can you talk to that? Who can you talk to about those things? Because they 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 really it's a challenge for them to understand fully that that. Right. Place. That's true. And building community with like minded individuals who share similar experiences is so important. And to your point about grieving. I have not experienced divorce, but I have grieved in a relationship because of some personal trauma. Yeah. And that was so weird to me because all of my life I had been, you know, happy go lucky and everything. But then this whatever instance happens and you're like, this is new. What do I do now? And so I think it is very important, again, for conversations like this to happen, but for women to bind together and say, oh, I've gone through this as well. Yes. And that's the importance of, of your, your mission. Yes. Now, for someone who is struggling, the bitter Betty, as you said, yes. <laughs> or they want to find a way out of that negativity or find their next step, what advice would you have for them? Um, I would certainly say definitely connecting with a coach. I I, app, I I speak toward groups and that's fine, support groups. Mm -hmm. the, the difference in the support group versus a coach or someone who is a little bit ahead, and it can be a counselor mm -hmm. if that's, if you need more work that way. Mm -hmm. um, but the, the difference is the support group, yes, we're all common, you know, we've gone through the same thing, but I'm no, I'm in it with you. So 
you may come to me and you might have a, a, a you know, you're, you may have solved that area or that problem, but now how do we do the work that's required? Mm -hmm. One of the things I work with women on is core values. When you've been married as I was for 13 years and in the relationship for 21 years, you come out and you're trying to figure out who are you? Mm -hmm. So we can sit in a support group and we can talk about, but how do we get to the individual work that needs to happen? Mm -hmm. And then be in a community again to help us support doing that work that's required to getting to us, to who we are now. And that's just one area, but yeah. That's wonderful. And so this is a perfect segue into the services you offer. And before we do that, I would just want to thank you for participating in the Mogul Code Summit as a sponsor. Yes. And so we featured her business on our website and at the summit. So tell us more about the services you offer uh, across your businesses. Absolutely. So I am also a, a author. Um, and so I do have my book that I wrote called You Can Again, Picking Up the Shattered Pieces After Divorce. And I, my goal is to get it in women's hands so that they can have practical tools to know that there is life after divorce. So I have that book. I also do have coaching services. So I offer one-to-one -one coaching for those women who aren't necessarily ready to be in a group mm -hmm. or they're ready for just, they want to just focus on their pathway or their career or whatever's a priority to them. And then I offered group coaching because I do know that community is huge as well. I agree with you uh, when you mentioned that um, community is huge. So being in a group of women who are different phases or stages and then having an opportunity to have a coach walk that group through um, getting from, you know, and I always start with mindset. We, we all start at the basics. Let's just start with and core values because we got to understand from the place that we operate now as, you know, being divorced. Who are we? And mm -hmm. so we start there and walk out that journey to getting clarity to the next steps that you need to take. Um, and every woman is different. So I, I don't like to, even in my group coaching, I don't, uh, you know, make it a, well, everybody's going to start here and everybody's going to end here because at some point I'm delving into um, the individual priorities for the women as well in mm -hmm. the group coaching. So that's wonderful. That's great. You need to take advantage of these consulting services if you fit this category of life after divorce. So very important. Now, shifting gears just a little bit on your entrepreneurial journey yes. today, what would you say has been a pivotal moment in your success? Wow. Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> um, pivotal moment. I just, this past Saturday, and it's so interesting you asked that, <laughs> just this past Saturday hosted my um, Esther Experience live event where I got women at the table, at the table of transformation. And we came together and we're not rehearsing the story. Mm -hmm. We're coming to tell the story so that we can heal. So it, that had been something that was on my plate since I started my business. And and, um, and I was like, I'm not sure when I'm going to get to that because I'm laying some of the other groundwork. And finally um, was able to launch that and, and bring these ladies in the room and to see the synergy mm -hmm. to see them um, connect and like, I didn't know that, okay, I'm not this I, since I was going through that same thing and the transparency, because so often as we were talking about, um, you know, the guilt and the shame will keep you hidden, mm -hmm. but they were just, so when I talk about a pivotal moment in, in my entrepreneurial journey, being able to launch that uh, live experience for women, I, hands down. <laughs> it sounds like we needed to be in the room. <laughs> that sounds wonderful. So for the transformation that you have seen, I know we talked about your services, but walk us through what that is like, or maybe there's a case study that you have um, witnessed in your consulting. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, one of the ladies that I work with, uh, and she wouldn't mind me sharing her name, is Evelyn Samuel. Um, and boy, uh, starting from being in a place of angst and pain and confusion and, you know, all, all the ball of emotions that come walking her through her journey and then seeing her be able to write a testimonial and say that she is now healed and whole and no longer in pieces. Mm. Um, you know, <laughs> that for me, it is monumental because 
That is the, the reason why. That's my why. Mm -hmm. um, so seeing her go from that to be able to, be able to show up at a workshop and then to, to be remarried now wow. and seeing her now flourishing in her new marriage be, and no longer, you know, dealing with all of the, the, um, the emotional upheaval from the past mm -hmm. uh, is just, and, and we still talk today. <laughs> so seeing that, being a witness to that, um, yeah, th those are just, those are the reasons why. Wow, that that is quite a testimony right there, and it's it's great to see even with my own business the transformations that we are able to provide to them. So I know for you, it is just comforting to know the impact that you are truly making with your clients. And so, just kudos to you again for just being the trailblazer for for this movement. Yeah. Now, I want to ask from your experience with your clients. What do you think that, or what is one thing you wish you could change about the way your clients or customers or uh, anyone approaches their personal life or business? Hmm. What is one thing I wish that I could change? Um, I wish <laughs> I wish they would recognize it sooner. <laughs> mm. I wish that they would recognize um, the value. Mm -hmm. of of having someone who has been in your shoes mm -hmm. and can help you walk through and get there sooner than the five or 10 years that it may take you doing it on your own. Mm -hmm. So yeah, for them to be able to get free sooner <laughs> than taking all of the long, uh, and sometimes that's necessary in our journeys. Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong, I'm not discounting that, but the areas that you don't need to. Mm -hmm. You, where you have somebody who can flip a switch and they have a tool or have mm. something that you need that can help you there, you know, that's what I would wish. <laughs> yeah. And sometimes we stand in our own way by not getting the help that we need because we could accelerate. And like you said, there's really no timeline. It might not always, it might not be solved within a year or two yeah. or three, but at least you're progressing little by little. So it's true. Sometimes we stand in our own way to, to get that help where we could be maybe at step five instead of, Step one. <laughs> Step one, six months later. Or, yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so um, I know we highlighted your book, but I want to go in more detail. Um, especially I think there's like chapter four is a specific yes. uh, a, a specific message in that chapter. Yes, yes. Chapter four is called Cover Girl. <laughs> and uh, it's one of my favorite chapters because I talk about the different masks that we wind up putting on in life. As general, in general, I mean, you can remove, you know, divorce, but really specifically in that area, um, we put on different masks to function because life is still happening. Mm -hmm. You get a divorce and you don't get to go lay down in the bed and put, pull the covers up over your head and, um, you know, act like life is not happening. Life is still life. Mm -hmm. And so you've got church, you, you may have, you know, you, you know, work for sure. Friends and family circles, uh, bills are coming, right? So, but, but each day you got to figure out which mask you're going to put on. And so to function in that day. So in that chapter, I really break down why we put on the different mask. Mm -hmm. um, and I talk about then the types of masks that we put on, right? So we put on masks because we may be offended or we put on masks again because we're angry. Mm -hmm. And then I break down and talk about the different types of masks. And there's 12 different masks that I talk about. But I'll tell you, this past Saturday, one of the ladies gave me a whole different mask. And I said, I got to add this to my list. <laughs> that was the beauty uh, of it, uh, in what, as well as us, you know, being in person too. But she mentioned that, um, I'm sorry. She mentioned that um, she put on the mask of comparison. And I just was like, oh my gosh. I had hadn't considered that mask. Yeah, that's 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 deep. Oh so, <laughs> yeah, and so it was just um, that particular chapter is just one of my faves. I'm sorry, somebody's trying to call me, man. Um, um, but that is one of my favorite favorite chapters to talk about the different kinds of masks that we put on and that we wear. Mm -hmm. That's very true, especially black women and then also the superhero hero cape that we often try to put on but it's okay to not be a superhero and try to do everything all at once I, yes. I i think that is very important to highlight we do wear a lot of masks i'm guilty of that sometimes my friends wouldn't even know what was going on with me when i was deep into something but they're always used to me being 
you know, again, happy go lucky. Yep. Avery's the modest, quiet, reserved friend who's loyal. And so we we do put on masks. I'm glad that you uh the, that you mentioned that, especially chapter four. So it sounds like we need to read chapter four. Just get the book, <laughs> the whole book, okay? <laughs> Go to Amazon and purchase her book. <laughs> that one's that, that one's one of my favorites. I have lots of other faves in the book, but that one, I don't tell you, people are like, oh my gosh, girl, that chapter, you need to do a workbook out of that chapter. I'm like, okay, okay. Sounds like a class in this coming. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yes. So shifting gears again, I want to ask, what is next for you? Where do you see your business and your movement going? Mm. Oh boy, man, you're making me need to write some stuff down. Um, <laughs> what do I see? Um, I really see more uh, community building. So I would love to, in the future, host a retreat. Um, so not just an intensive or a day workshop, but really a retreat where women can come and spend time together with different components. Maybe there's a, a career component. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe there's, you know, of course, a relationship component. Um, my I deal with empty nesters typically. So it's not that we're co-parenting or have that, that element. Um, and I see myself doing speaking engagements as well. So that's some of my uh, future plans as well. Touring, uh, ideally with my book and, uh, and offering my services that way as well. Well, you heard it here first. We're going to hold you accountable because we look to see that coming soon. Yes. <laughs> you can't wait to see the evolution of it. So um, please let us know how can they keep up with you? So when the, the retreat comes or the next intensive comes yes. or maybe the group coaching, how can they get in contact with you? Absolutely. You can go to www.iamfeliciaroberts.com. That's my website. Um, and there you can keep up with all of the events uh, that I have. My book, uh, there's a, a place to purchase the book as well um, and to join my Facebook community. So I do have a, a Facebook community as well called Ignite Her Divorce Support. So if uh, women who've experienced divorce or you know someone um, who've experienced divorce in that group, we really are supporting each other. Again, that group is really con in, uh, private, safe, where women can express themselves. But we're not, again, about rehearsing it. We're about now, sis, how do we, what do we need to do to help support you get to uh, keep moving forward. So those are um, the, and I am Felicia Roberts on Instagram as well. Be sure to follow Felicia on Instagram and visit her website and join the support group Ignite Her on Facebook because you definitely don't want to miss out on the other gems because if you enjoyed this, I mean, I can only imagine what she was holding back on. Of course, we only have limited time, but this was great information. So you definitely want to keep up with Felicia. So to close this out, I have enjoyed this conversation. Are there any last words of advice you want to share with the audience? Um, I just want to thank you for the opportunity to be here on, on uh, Lady Mogul Talk and, and connecting with your community as well. Um, and that's been good for me. I would just say, you know, ladies, don't stop. Um, if, if there are things that you are purposed in life to do, don't let anything that you go through stop you from getting to your purpose mm -hmm. because you won't be satisfied until you do. And we all will go through things. We all will face challenges, but getting connected with the right people, the right communities um, and getting the support you need to get where, get, get to your purpose is what I would say. <laughs> Those are great words to live by. And I hope that the audience truly takes that to heart because when you follow your purpose, you, even if you get unmotivated, as long as you have that purpose, the discipline will find you. It might take, oh. but the discipline will find you. So thank you for sharing those words of encouragement to the Lady Mogul community. So true. <laughs> well, this has been another segment of Lady Mogul Talk, and we have enjoyed a nice conversation with Felicia Roberts. Again, be sure to follow her on Instagram, join the Facebook group, and visit her website. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next session.